From the moment I built my first 3D printer, I've always wanted to try and capture time lapses where the print seemed to grow out of thin air. And today, after much trial and error, mostly error, we'll hopefully achieve this. <laughs> that looks so sick. So in today's video, there's four main steps to achieve time lapses on a 3D printer. First off, we'll need to mount a camera, then set up print server hardware, configure software on the server to talk to my 3D printer, and finally dial in the settings for capturing time lapses. So the first job, mount the camera. The camera I bought is a Raspberry Pi 2 camera. To mount it to the printer, I found a 3D model of an arm to hold it to my specific printer, the Ender 3 V2. I wanted this mount to be strong, so I loaded up some new PETG filament. It printed all the small pieces fine, but failed two thirds of the way through the large arm section. I increased the temperature, and it failed earlier at one third of the way through. It was getting clogged, and even after preheating the filament, I couldn't get it out of the nozzle. I really had to yank so hard that I just broke off the filament. The culprit appeared to be heat creep. See, to print PETG, I had to increase my printer's temperature to over 240 degrees, and then my stock cooling the printer just didn't handle that well. So I decided that's a battle for another day, and switch it out for PLA Plus for the rest of this project. Alright, so it's the next day. Uh, the print was successful. So, that's good. We now have a working arm, and the goal is that like this goes onto the printer, uh, and then it can take photos. Oh, dude, this isn't going to work. If I stick that on there and try to close it, it hits the edge of the, the enclosure. Oh, I didn't think about that. Thankfully, I can just mark out a new mounting hole and drill it. This will fix the angle of the arm, and it now misses the side of the enclosure. I then screwed in the camera mount. It was at this point that I realized it wasn't actually made for my model of camera because it just kept falling out. So I had to go and find one that does actually work with my camera and then adapt it to fit to the mount of this arm. With the camera popped into its case, I can now screw it in place and then zip tie the ribbon cable. Mounting of the camera is now complete. It's now time to set up the server. The heart of the project is a Raspberry Pi 4 with 4 gigabytes of RAM. The Pi 4 requires a heatsink for cooling, and the only one I have on hand is this RGB tower for a future project. So for now, we're going full MLG on this server. As for inputs, we have the 3D printer plugged into a USB port, and the Pi Cam V2 through its ribbon cable. I also have a small dongle for my wireless keyboard and trackpad combo unit. Now, next task is to load an operating system onto the Raspberry Pi's micro SD card. What we're after is OctoPrint. This is the 3D printer server software. Thankfully, the Raspberry Pi imager makes setup easier than ever. Select OctoPrint, and it configures absolutely everything for me. Once it's done, put the SD into the Raspberry Pi and turn it on. Once it's booted, we get an IP address for the OctoPrint print server, and we can type that into our computer's browser. And with that, we now have a 3D printer print server ready to be configured. Right, that looks pretty cool. So I've installed the OctoPrint server. I can now access the camera um, and remote control the 3D printer. I've actually got control of this axis so I can move it forwards, uh, the plate back, and then lift up the main height. That's so cool. It's it's like a remote control car. And then I've got a camera that shows me exactly like what that camera that we've mounted is seeing. The issue is it's printing too high. For some reason, it just like took off into the sky and just noodled filament everywhere. And that's to do with the auto bed leveler. I'm not too sure. This is all pretty cool and like new to me, so it's gonna take a little bit of figuring out what to do. My suspicion was correct. It was actually due to the auto bed leveler. See, when it comes to 3D printing, having a level bed is essential. And recently I upgraded my printer and installed a BL Touch for auto bed leveling. It screws on next to my printer's nozzle and wires into the main board underneath the printer. The little probe will go around and check the distance from the nozzle to the build plate and the printer then uses that information to keep perfectly parallel with the print surface. After this process, I have to set a Z-axis offset of negative 2.7. And if it doesn't do this, it ends up printing in thin air. Sound familiar? What I've actually found through trial and error is that if you turn the printer on whilst connected to the server, it doesn't load that initial Z-axis offset, the negative 2.7. So what I had to do is turn on the printer first, let it fully initialize, load the offset, then connect it to the print server. It then printed fine. Well, all right, so it finally prints, but the probing of the BL touch is now failing. So I need to look at flashing 
new firmware to the printer to possibly fix that. It's never ending. Like honestly, you fix one thing and then instantly something else breaks. I ended up flashing custom Smith 3D firmware to the printer and the probe still wasn't working properly. The fix in the end, a quarter turn clockwise of a screw on top of the probe and this dialed it in properly. All the effort is worth it in the end because the data that I get from that probe, I'm able to now feed into Octoprint to a plugin that gives me a 3D visualization of the beds leveling. Tells us exactly which manual adjustments to make to get the best print results. With the printer now doing the bare minimum of its job, printing, we can now set up a plugin called Octolapse. With Octolapse installed, there's a stack of settings to configure, but we'll just start with the complete basics. Take a photo, every layer printed. Not bad, but there's some pink flicker on the screen and that's really annoying. So I moved the camera's cable around in case it was interference from another cable. This worked, but now we need to fix that resolution. It's 640p. I tried to boost it up to the camera's max eight megapixels, but this broke the camera's link. I went researching and found that it can only handle half of the native resolution through a binned mode. So I reduced the camera's resolution and also told Octolapse to move the nozzle out of the way for each photo. That actually looks so sick. That is what I've been, that's what I went through all this effort for. It just grows out of nowhere. So this is working pretty well. We have a high resolution capture and the prints are appearing out of thin air. Almost there. The next step is to tune the exposure of the camera. This was a killer. This is because the enclosure is black and the printer is black. So the average scene is exposing for the black. That way if you use white filament, it's overexposed. I spent hours on hours over multiple days trying to fix this. I'd have to SSH into the Raspberry Pi, modify the OctoPi webcam boot script and restart the Pi to see the results. To get the correct exposure, I had to switch to manual, lower the ISO to 100 and that was it. If I inputted a shutter speed, it crashed the link. And if I made many other tweaks, it also crashed the link. But in the end, I was able to go from this full auto to this manually exposed. It's awesome, it's ready to go. I grabbed the model, chucked it on the server and hit print. It failed. We'll try again. It seems that some prints aren't a fan of the nozzle moving out of the way for the photo and it just ripped the prints with it. So I made some adjustments to my slicing and added a skirt to have extra layer adhesion and left the nozzle over the top of this print for this time lapse. This worked providing us with a beautifully exposed time lapse for some white filament. I also have a nice little cover for my BL Touch. All right, it's time for the grand finale. Let's get a time lapse of this astronaut chilling on a mini moon. We've learned that the process is as follows. Switch on the 3D printer and let it set its Z axis offset. Turn on the Raspberry Pi print server to boot Octo Print, and this will bring through our camera feed. Take the 3D model and slice it in Cura. Upload the G code file to Octo Print. Click print. The printer will now warm up the print bed and nozzle. The BL Touch will now go around and probe the leveling of the bed. We can now review the progress remotely through our camera feed. And after two hours, we have a completed time lapse of our print. Now I'm super stoked with the results of the time lapse. Like it is such a relief to have it finally working, but it does affect the quality of the print. Having the nozzle move out of the shot for each photo is leaving little blobs on the prints. Now during cleanup and removing support, I can scrape these away, but there is a noticeable difference between prints that had the nozzle in shot versus out of shot. I'm gonna spend some time tweaking the retraction settings because I feel like that's causing the blobs on the 3D print. But at the end of the day, I'm stoked. I've got time lapses are working. Like this has been a dream to set up and I'm so happy that I can now capture them. You might be thinking, Cap, that's cool. Like you've got an awesome little model, but what the else are you gonna use your 3D printer for? Like what's the point of all of this effort? I've got a lot of custom tech projects planned, including modding my desk and PC with custom electronic housing. So I need the 3D printer to create that. 
The time lapses aren't essential, they're just a bit of eye candy for the YouTube videos. However, the camera does play a vital part in giving me remote access from the studio or anywhere in the world to check in on my prints and make sure they're running fine. Especially because once I add LED lighting to the enclosure, I want to keep that door closed to retain constant ambient temperature, which improves the quality of the prints. So the camera is actually quite useful. If you liked today's video, thumbs it. If you loved it, sub it, and I'll see you in the next one. Maybe, actually I'll see you in the 3D printer video, the first 3D printer, that'll be up here. And if you wanna see how I built this enclosure, which is pretty fun, that one's over there. Thanks for watching. I think I already said that. All right, <laughs> see you dude. <laughs> oh, what do you want? Come here, dude.